Welcome biologists, this session where we're going to take a look at how to use a chlorometer to determine the concentration of a substance. Now a very typical exam question that you might find on this is like this one on the, on the paper at the moment. Now you may get multiple choice questions, short answer questions or a six marker like this one. But throughout all of these different questions it's the same theme that comes up. So anything in a red box is taken directly from the mark scheme and there are certain things that you definitely need to know on this. So the first thing that we need to know is how to do a serial dilution, because quite often you're only provided with a small quantity of a known concentration. And from that, you need to provide and make several different concentrations from that one known sample. So for example, here I've been provided with a two milliliter of a 1% glucose concentration. I need to make several different concentrations from this. So what I do is I take half of that out so one mil and pop it into the test tube and add one mil of water and this dilutes my one percent to 0.5 percent glucose if i do the same again take one mil out put it in the next test tube add one mil of water that becomes 0.25 and if i carry on doing this process eventually i'll get five total different concentrations due to halving the concentration each time diluting it with water so the first thing i do is i'm going to do a seal dilution what I would then do is I would do a Benedict's test for reducing sugars on my known concentrations and on my unknown concentration. So to do that, just to remind you, you would heat up your sample with Benedict's in a water bath and then you'd get a, a colour such as yellow, green, orange or brick red. The strength of the concentration will depend upon the colour that you get. So the stronger the concentration, the darker the colour will appear. Now it's really important here that we use the same volume of Benedict's for each of my samples. I use the same volume of sugar. The concentration is obviously going to be different because I've got different concentrations that I've made in my cereal dilution. And it's also really important that I treat my unknown sample in exactly the same way. So using the same volume of Benedict's, using the same volume of that sample, heating it with Benedict's and getting that colour. Now once you've got those different colours, from your Benedict's test, you would then filter out the precipitate. So the precipitate is the colour that is formed from the Benedict's reaction. What I would then do is I'd use a colorimeter to determine the absorbance of those samples. So this here is a colorimeter, and what it does is it passes a beam of light through my sample. Now my samples are placed into a cuvette like this one, so one cuvette per sample, and I place the cuvette inside this part of the colorimeter here, lifting the lid up, putting my sample inside and reading off the sample uh, absorbance here. Now, before you actually do that, there are a number of steps that you need to take. You need to calibrate your colorimeter each time before you actually use and read the setting, read the absorbance. So to do that, um, what I would do is I'd fill one of these cuvettes with water and I'd put it inside there and close the lid. What I would then do is I'd set it to zero by pressing this calibratory button here and it would set the absorbance to zero. Now they don't like it here when you say using water, you have to say using a blank. So I'm going to calibrate, calibrate my colorometer by setting it to zero using a blank. It's also very important that I use a red filter. So I'd press this button here, which stands for red, green or blue filter, so that I get a little R in this corner here because I'm going to be looking at a red filter. And I'm going to be measuring the absorbance. So the absorbance is the, the volume of light that is absorbed by my sample. Once I've got my absorbance for my different known concentrations of glucose, I would then plot a calibration curve. So the higher the concentration of glucose, the more precipitate that is going to be made, but I'm filtering out that precipitate. So the absorbance is going to be low. If I do not remove my precipitate in the filtration process, my absorbance would be quite high for the higher glucose concentrations. But because I have actually filtered out in this, it means that I'm going to get a nice calibration curve. And, and as I get a high percentage of glucose, I get a low absorbance. Now, because I've treated my unknown sample in exactly the same way, I'll know the absorbance of my unknown sample. And I can use my calibration curve to find the concentration of my unknown glucose sample. Um, so I'd literally just read across and I would get the concentration of my sample. And that is how you use a colorimeter. You can use a biosensor as well. And a biosensor is literally just a small computer that would read from it. You can read off straight away what the glucose